Hello everyone. In this video, I will go over my solution for the problem named climbing the tree taken from today's code forces round. This problem is an excellent problem which teaches you range updates and range queries without using a complicated data structure such as a segment tree. So initially when I looked at this problem, I thought we could use a segment tree to maintain the queries and to handle the updates. But it actually turns out that there's a very simple solution in which we just use ranges of numbers. So we don't use any fancy data structure. We just use numbers. We only use integers in the entire solution. And that's what I'll be explaining in this video. So in this problem, we're basically given a snail climbing up a tree. The tree height is h meters and we do not know this height. We only know the attributes of the snail a and b where the value of a represents the amount the snail climbs up during the day and b represents the amount the snail slides down during the day. So if, if the snail climbs up a meters and if it does not reach the top of the tree then it will slide down b meters. So the resulting position will be a minus b. Then again it climbs up a meters and then again it slides down and so on. It keeps alternating like that. So we know that on the nth day it would have climbed a minus b times n minus 1 and then it will climb plus a on the nth day. So an expression for the height could be obtained by using the simple logic that on the first n minus 1 days the snail is climbing a minus b times n minus 1 and on the nth day it is climbing a. So we know that this is going to be the total height. So the height will be like this will be greater than or equal to the height. And we also know that on the n minus 1th day, the snail has not reached the top. So it has reached the top for the first time on the nth day. So this means that on the n minus 1th day, uh, it would have climbed a total of a minus b times n minus 2 plus a. And this is strictly less than h. So we know that h will belong to the range from a minus b times n minus 2 plus a plus 1 up till a minus b times n minus 1 plus a because these are all the integer values which are possible for the height of the tree and we maintain this range for for each event so we are given q events the first type of event is in which we have a snail of attributes a b and we know the number n so given a b and n we can find the centaur range and we just maintain these ranges and if 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 the range which we get does not coincide with the larger range so if there is no overlap at all then this is a contradictory message so we ignore it otherwise otherwise we will update the bigger range with this smaller range so we will so we will maintain a global variable the min min height and the max height and we'll update the min height and max height with these values with these values and if if there is no so if if these two ranges are disjoint then we will we will we won't do anything we'll ignore this we'll ignore this event and we'll print we'll print a zero because we, we ignore it otherwise if there is some coinciding values we will output one and we will update this range with this with this new range and so that's the that's how we handle queries of type one in order to handle queries of type two we need to we need to find out the value of n. We are given a, b and we know what the value of h is and we want to find out whether whether there is a single value of n or not. If there are more than one values of n, we, we will print minus one. Otherwise, we will just print the single value of n. And in order to find n, we can use the simple logic that we just need to figure out. So we know min h and we know max h. And give, given this range of min h and max h, which are global variables, we can find out n for min h and n for max h, max h. So this is going to be min n. We get min n from here and we get max n from here. And if min n is strictly less than max n, then this means that more than one value of n is possible. So more than one value of n is possible. And n cannot be determined. n cannot be strictly determined. And that's why we print minus 1. Otherwise, we know that min n is going to be equal to max n. 
uh, else we know that min n is max n. So this means that we just print this value. We just print this single value of n. And that's how we we can efficiently find out the, the answer for the second type of query. And we just deal, we, we just take these queries one by one. And as you can see, we are only using integers in the entire solution. I tried a number of uh, times using segment trees and using various other methods and uh, it just TLE'd or gave wrong answers because it, it's actually a very simple problem if you think about it in terms of ranges and if you try to simplify the solution instead of complicating it. So let's try to uh, do a dry run of this algorithm using the examples. So in the first example where a is 3, b is 2 and n is 5, we start off with the big range of 1 to infinity which represents all the possible values of h and we narrow down the range using the formula a minus b times n minus 2 plus a plus 1 up till a minus b times n minus 1 plus a. So using this range we get 7 to 7 and these are the new values of min h and max h. Uh, in the code I'll show you how you can generalize this to any h and it basically depends on merging ranges together which is a simple math operation. So for merging two ranges l1 r1 and l2 r2 together you can use the simple function max of l1 comma r1 till min of r1 comma r2 this is going to be the resultant range when you merge two ranges together and you can use this method to get the new values of min h and max h once you have these new values of min h and max h and if if this is a valid range then you print one if this is not a valid range you ignore this you print zero and you don't change the values of min h and max h. So in this case, it is a valid range and that's why you print one and you print these other new values of min h and max h. Then you handle the query of type two where you're given a is four and b is one and you find the minimum and the maximum values of n. Now, if they match, you print this common value of n, otherwise you print minus one. So in order to find the common value of n, you use the inequality a minus b times n minus 2 plus a plus 1 is less than or equal to h. This comes from the fact that h lies lies in this range. So in the range over here on the left side, h lies in that range, min h to max h, which is which is given by which is given by this quantity. So h should be greater than or equal to this small value. So we know that n should be less than or equal to this quantity. And that's why you can have a strong inequality at n is strictly less than this than this number plus plus some big number like plus 100 or plus 20 or plus 10. Now now the reason why I use a strict inequality is because you can initialize n. So initial n will be will be this number and then you keep decreasing n. So while a minus b times n minus 2 plus a plus 1 is greater than h you keep decreasing n. So this will decrease like at most 20 times so loop runs at most 20 times or this loop over here below and once you terminate the loop you'll have the smallest value of n which which is valid and that's going to be your that's going to give you your number of days to reach the top so you can use this algorithm this simple loop to find out the value of n and uh, over here you can verify that both min n and max n are equal to 2 as explained over here. So that's why we we can just output 2. In in another example where, where you have a minus 1 case, you will notice that min n and max n are different because min h and max h are different. And you can try out this algorithm on your own in which you basically combine the ranges using this this method and you use this method uh, on the right side to compute the number of days to reach the top. Now I'll show you the code which implements both these methods in order to check in order to handle both types of queries. Uh, the, the method on the left handles the update queries and the method on the right handles the queries of type 2. So in the code I basically compute days. So days is the method which I just described on the right in which I find the number of days to reach height L with a snail of parameters 
PNB. So I compute this value by using this loop, which I just explained on the whiteboard. And the reason why this works is because this finds the smallest value of n, which satisfies the inequality a minus b times n minus 2 plus a is strictly less than l. So this is the smallest number. So this is the smallest n such that a minus b times n minus 2 plus a is less than l. And once you have this value of n, or you can check whether the ends are equal or not. So in queries of type 1, you compute L and R. If the ranges don't match, so ranges are disjoint, you print 0 and you continue. Otherwise, you update the ranges using the combining method. And this is how you handle queries of type 1. To handle queries of type 2, you basically this, this is a border case which you notice uh, in which uh, you don't really need this but you could have this border case in which uh, it takes only one day to reach the top so obviously if a is greater than or equal to max l then it will take just one day so you print one and you continue uh, this is not really needed but you can add it if you want and uh, even without this the code gets accepted in which uh, I compute the min n and the max n so min n is d is for min height and max n is the d is for max height and if min n is equal to max n uh, we just print the value we print this common value of n otherwise we print minus one and we go on to the next test case uh, and you can verify that this uh, code does get accepted so i hope you like this problem and my solution if you have any doubts in either the updates or the queries methods or uh, do leave them in the comments down below and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up Thank you.